Entry 27, this is Wednesday, May 6. This is a relatively short entry. What do we have here? Well, we basically now have the final decision from the Chief Justice uh, that the staff can go forward with the uh, reenactment uh, 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 program, including uh, the contributions of the Secret Service, which provided the limousine, uh, and, and, and the FBI, and that uh, uh, basically uh, uh, Norman Redlick and Ar Ireland uh, uh, Specter and Rankin were to uh, sort of super supervise the project. The uh, the limousine the Secret Service provided was actually the it was the follow up car that was behind the limousine in the Dallas parade. Is that correct? Well, I think so. Did it have the exact dimensions uh, of, of well, the limousine? I, I know that the presidential limousine was not in service at that time. It was being rebuilt uh, yeah. with with uh, titanium doors and a permanent hard shell top. But I believe it was the Secret Service follow up car, which. I think was called halfback, and that was what was used uh, for the reenactment. There is a there is a thing at the very beginning here I want to ask you about. Uh, you say I did not attend, among other reasons, because apparently the chief justice had commented at my presence in the hearing the prior day. Um, so was he unhappy that you had sat in on some of the hearings? Yes, apparently he was. I sat in on the hearing uh, of the three uh, FBI uh, uh, agents, and I thought that the uh, Department of Justice would have a particular interest in that, uh, but. Um, uh, it, it, I understand his point. I mean, I, I had a, a wide range of, uh, of duties uh, at the commission, and uh, uh, it may have looked like I was just uh, amusing myself. Uh, whereas, uh, so I, I, I respected his judgment and uh, did not go to any future hearings. And, and, and that, that was true of the other members of the staff as well. They went into the hearing room only when they were to, uh, uh, assigned to participate in the interrogation of the particular witness. You conclude by mentioning the most recent memorandum prepared by Dr. Goldberg. Well, give us a sense of what Dr. Goldberg was up to these days here in, uh, in May. Well, I'm not sure I can talk specifically about, about May, but uh, he, he was uh, uh, doing some work, uh, uh, actually some very important work in collecting um, all of the tapes uh, and radio and TV materials that had been generated uh, at the time of the assassination and, and assembled them, organized them. I think they were maintained at the Department of Defense. I'm not sure about that. And uh, there were many useful leads uh, of an investigative nature to be gained by looking at some of these films of, of for example, the crowded uh, interrogation uh, area in the police department uh, while Oswald was there Friday night and then Saturday, Saturday night. So he worked hard uh, uh, on that, and he, he was also doing uh, historical work on previous assassinations that we were going to include in the uh, 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 report. And uh, after some uh, uh, internal debate, he also assumed responsibility for uh, drafting uh, the initial uh, version of the appendix dealing uh, with rumors and speculations. We had decided to uh, do that, as I may have mentioned before. Uh, and it proved particularly useful because the idea was that, that every uh, allegation uh, uh, or rumor that we addressed uh, had to ha have its rebuttal uh, in the text of the report so that the appendix could uh, review the, the rumor or allegation and then answer it by referring to previous pages uh, within the report. Right. So there were after a draft was proposed, it was discovered there were five, six, or seven allegations that had not been treated uh, or addressed uh, directly or perf adequately in, in the report. And so the responsible uh, authors or editors of that section went about to, to uh, remedy that, that deficiency.